Yo, what up, YouTube family? Ah, so I'm literally about to go to the gym, but I was like, I want to make a video before because I had like a thought. So, hold on. Someone asked me basically to answer some questions about bottom surgery and like the expectations and like all of that. But literally, then another thought came in my head and I was like, let me talk about right now because that's where I'm at right now. Not saying I'm not going to like touch on bottom surgery stuff ever on my channel because I have, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to, but like, let me talk about right now. I'm like enjoying the moment right now because like I'm still pursuing. So first off, the only reason I'm getting bottom surgery is literally not only, but the biggest reason I'm getting bottom surgery, bottom surgery, <laughs> the biggest reason I would be getting bottom surgery is specifically, bruh. The biggest reason I'd be getting bottom surgery is to is for sex. I that's that's the only really aspect that I can like. That's that would drive me enough to want to get it. The second biggest one is probably just like comfortability, like going out and being. I guess I don't want to say cis passing, but I, I'm not doing it for others. But like you know, I I do like when I pack. I don't pack because I don't like how it feels, and it, I just don't like packing like that. But when I do, I like. I like having the boards there so one is sex and two is comfortability like i just want something right there that's bigger than what i have because i got something in my pants baby if you know you know i have bottom growth i really i do you know and that gets me far as far as like all the by the way kids don't watch this so my bottom growth gets me far like getting head is absolutely immaculate it's amazing i, I love head because i have enough i have enough dick to get sucked completely so that's amazing but when it comes to penetration it's not quite long enough to get there so that's why i want bottom surgery and it doesn't and also i like the idea of having balls in my pants just to create that but i like that bro that 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 i can't i i don't know how better to explain this i want those things and i'm gonna get them so point blank period but i want to talk about like right now and my sex life right now and all that because it is enjoyable right now and sometimes when we talk about bottom surgery also i'm going to be eating these rice cakes because i'm literally going to the gym so this is like pre-carbs chocolate rice cake almond butter and banana but yeah right now it's enjoyable bro like i feel like when i get bomb surgery it's gonna be the same in the sense that like my whole world is not gonna go upside down because when i'm into it with my partner you know i'm grabbing touch him or body to body it's still gonna be the same you know what i mean like the motions are the same but everything is the same the only difference is gonna be like i guess i have a longer extension of myself you know what i mean so that's how i see it. like i know it's gonna be different but it's not gonna be so different where it's gonna like crap on what i'm experiencing now and make it seem like this is nothing because i don't believe that like, i think things are gonna change but it doesn't mean right now it's terrible. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, like my life right now is not terrible. I just know I can keep leveling up. It's the same thing with money, right? When you got a couple thousand in your account, it's nice. It's nice. But you know that having a hundred thousand would just feel that much more better. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can be happy with a thousand in your account. You can be happy with the hundreds in your account. But, like, you just know there's levels to it. So that's how I feel. That's the best way I can explain, like, my whole transition like wanting bottom surgery and stuff is like i know there's levels to it but i don't hate myself right now at all at all same thing with being on t a year on t i was ecstatic but i knew five years on t i would like i'm just gonna keep going up i look like this like you feel me like i was happy with how i looked at year on t but now i'm five years on t and look at me so it's like there's levels even now i'm five years on t i'd be already be thinking about it imagine when i'm 10 years on t i might have a freaking goatee or something you feel me? Like, there's levels. It doesn't mean right now my mustache is horrible. It literally just means there's levels. Let's get into it. A little bit deeper. Um, As far as y'all, if you're not enjoying sex right now because you're so caught up in the future, getting the perfect prosthetic, getting the perfect bottom surgery results, bro, enjoy it right now. Like, you were given right now for a reason. There is happiness in your right now. Even if you don't have a prosthetic, you can, like, you feel me? Like, find what makes you happy. Bro, I remember I came out, I was gay, right? Lesbian. That's what I said to the world. 
with my girlfriend at the time when I was 16, she really didn't see gender too hardcore. Like I was just, I was just their partner. Um, I didn't have a prosthetic. I was literally 15, 16. But I remember like, I had those thoughts, right? Like I wanted to like penetrate. That's just, that's just me as a dude. That's always been like, I just always have wanted to penetrate. That's just me. And I couldn't though. And I mean, I was 15, 16, couldn't I didn't have a prosthetic to, you know, help me out. I have a funny story I'm gonna tell you after, but you know, I did what I could do at the time. Like I would just, I would still be intimate with my partner. We would just make out. And that was amazing because and that, that's what that moment in time was for. Like that's what, that's what I could get out of that moment. And it was amazing. Like take what you can get. I don't mean settle for less, but take what you can get. If clearly, like for me, bottom surgery is going to be, it takes like a whole year just to get, you know, electrolysis, finding the donor spot, me deciding what I want to do, getting my life together, but not scheduling, wait list. If there's, I don't think Kaiser has a wait list, but you get what I'm trying to say. So it could take some time. And, um, damn, it could take some time. I'm already thinking about it. I'm like, damn, it takes some time. But my point is like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to diminish my life now and just wait till then to be happy. Like, I'm going to be happy now. I'm not gonna wait a year to be happy. So that's what I'm trying to say to y'all. Like, you don't have the perfect prosthetic. Like, I remember I I have a perfect prosthetic now because I can afford it. Um, thank God I was able to get the MSO prosthetic, which is my favorite prosthetic. And before I didn't just I couldn't afford that. I was a kid. I was 17, 18. I literally I just couldn't afford those things yet until I started going to college and I got FAFSA financial aid and I was able to buy a lot of big purchases because financial aid gives you a lot of money um, to put in your pocket. And yeah, I, I remember I was dugging it out. I think my first ever prosthetic was like a $30 dildo off Amazon. Now I upgraded, I got, I believe it was um, a free Tom. If y'all know, free Tom, free to M. Free Tom prosthetic, like a hundred dollars. Um, after that, I got a peacock. I hated it. I hate peacock stuff. No, sorry, peacock. It's not me. Not for me. And two, it's like, bro, they just got to find what works for you. Because some are too thin. Like, you got to find what feels like home. For me, the MSO Zeus prosthetic feels like home. That's my, like, that just feels like, that's right. That that was the, that was the dick appointed to me. Like, that's how it feels. <laughs> Nothing else feels like that. So you gotta find what works for you. Cause yeah, some are just too, too long, but too, you know, there's differences and they all come in different shapes and sizes. So you gotta find what works for you. But the funny story I was gonna say, when I was 15, 16, and I was over here with my little girlfriend making out and I eventually I was like, I want to penetrate. Cause like I just had that, that's just me. I have that urge to do that. That's how I get intimate. Like that's how you know what I mean. Obviously, there's other stuff too, but I, as Christian Julian Trey Blue, have an urge to penetrate. So, yeah, I remember I went on Amazon, and I didn't know I was 15, 16. So I got a packer, a soft packer, and I thought I was gonna be able to like. I didn't know, bro. I did not know. I wasn't. I didn't know. Tell me why my dad found it. Mm-hmm. I got it shipped to the house. I was all excited, like, ooh, I'm finna put this in my pants. I'm finna have a big mm -hmm. No, my dad found it and he was pissed because he knew he wasn't even so mad about the fact that his daughter was over here buying a, a prosthetic packer. He was mad because he knew what I was trying to do with it. He knew, no. Oh my God, no, no, no. This is, I'm remembering it coming back. My dad got mad at me because he found the, the packer that I got from Amazon. But in reality, I actually bought it just to test it out in my pants to see if I liked it. Because this is on the time that the girlfriend that I had, I mentioned it in my last video, in my last two videos. I mentioned it in the um, how to, not the how to be a man, but the one before that. Oh, they had a Nigerian, being a Nigerian trans man. But I remember my dad thought that I was getting it to have sex with my girlfriend. And he was mad because I was only 15, 16. Like, what are you doing having sex in your parents' house at 15, 16? So 
That's what he thought it was. But I was trying to explain to him because he thought I was just a, a gay girl. And I was trying to explain to him, like, no, it was for, I remember, oh my God. That's what, bro, that caused so much issues. Me and my girlfriend broke up. She couldn't come to my house no more, blah, blah, blah. Because my dad, and then my dad told her mom, because they were, like, they talked, because she used to be at my house. We used to have sleepovers. We, used to, we were we were definitely, like, gay. We were, like, we were together, but we weren't trying to have sex like that. But I remember my dad got mad, bro, mad, because he thought I was trying to have sex for real, for real. Like, I was just, like, skipping to that, like, like you feel me? But it was really because I just wanted to know if that felt right to me. I'm not mad at him, though, but I just remember it, and he called me up so mad. I remember I was at basketball practice, or I, I, I had a basketball game, and it just finished, and he called me so mad, and I, I like, I didn't even want to go in the car. He called, like, I was just, it was just a bad situation. So be careful, y'all, because it's very hard to explain to people that don't know you're trans why you're interested in Packers and things like that. I also got caught one time in my school. Some drama had went on. And my principal got my phone and went through it, which was kind of wild already. And found a picture of a prosthetic I wanted. And she didn't know. Like, people don't understand, like, I, I'm, I'm trans. I, I'm looking at prosthetics because I want one for me. Like, it's personal. And she thought I was, like, doing some undercover, like, weird stuff. I was just like, bro, y'all don't understand. Like, trans people, like, we, we look at prosthetics. It's not weird. It's like if I had a, if I was missing an arm and I was looking at prosthetic arms, but it's just so weird when trans people want to look at prosthetic dicks and breastplate. Like, can you just let us live? But yeah, I've had a lot of funny run-ins with Packers prosthetics, but that was when I was younger. So but when I'm older now, like I haven't had any, like my parents haven't found my stuff. They don't care anymore. I think it was more so just the fact that I was like 15, 16 and they thought I was just trying to have like full on sex. But, yeah, so I'm just kind of sharing my story, and, I'm like, there's levels to this. I didn't just wake up and have the best prostate. I didn't, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Bottom surgery wasn't a year away. Like, it took levels. And not everyone goes this route. This is just me, because I used to not even want bottom surgery at all. I was good off it. But now I'm in like a different headspace. Things change, and I'm like I'm down. I'm down to just get it over with, and just enjoy the rest of my life with this new dick. You feel me? So, a permanent prosthetic. That's how I see it for real. It's so literally a permanent prosthetic. Cause I I use prosthetics. I've been using them, and I was getting tired too. Every time, well, I mean, every three years, four years, you spend like six hundred, seven hundred on a prosthetic. Not the worst, but wants to also be spending that much you know what i mean like i'd rather just <laughs> <coughs> well then get <coughs> my insurance covers it completely so i'm not even really spending any money to get bottom surgery so it's like you know which is another thing if y'all want to have if y'all have questions about like money wise ask me because under kaiser i ha i pay for nothing i have i didn't pay for top surgery hysterectomy i didn't pay for the egg retrieval which is a blessing because literally just the egg retrieval alone can be eight thousand dollars. Crazy. Well, yeah. So God has been making it possible for real because it's expensive. My hormones are like five bucks every three months. My syringes are like five bucks, like this God. And I feel for people that are not, they don't have as much access with the kind of pay out of pocket, but God will provide, but I'm so blessed. So that's another reason why I'm like taking advantage of the the place I'm in now. Like taking the, I'm taking what I can get again, you feel me? But yeah, you don't have to follow what I'm doing. You don't have to get bombed to it. You don't have to. You don't have to do any of what I'm doing. I'm just telling y'all where I'm at in my life and my journey. But yeah, y'all enjoy right now. That's all you got. For all you know, you know what I'm saying. Jesus might come back, and you might never have a chance to get bombed surgery. So enjoy the time right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's how I see it, bro. I'm not saying that I don't think I'm gonna be alive in a year. I'm just saying you never like just enjoy today. Period. 
It's not overcomplicated. Oh yeah. Also, mm, I almost mixed in the second video with this one, but I'm not. <clears throat> the second video is going to be talking about my expectations for bomb surgery because I literally have a whole list. That's what you're supposed to do. A surgery like this, you want to have a list of your wants, your not wants, your all expectations, all that. So I literally have one. So next video in the future, I will definitely go into that more because I feel like it might help people um, know what to say when if they're gonna go or you know get more insight as far as what they can ask because I have a lot of questions. You know, I don't think we should be going into stuff blindly and not like ask questions. Like if someone's gonna do something to your body, ask questions because you don't want them to do it and then you're like. <laughs> you feel me? So, better safe than sorry. Or better safe than regretful, whatever. So, yeah, I'm going to continue eating this. And it's 6.09. I'm going to hurry up now because the gym closes at 8. And I want to get in a solid workout. Ugh, I'm trying to do shoulders. I haven't hit my actual, like, shoulders um, in a minute. I want more definition in my shoulders. But I feel like I already have definition in my shoulders. I'm such a gym fool. See, then again, I'm, I'm super masculine. I, I'm, I like penetrating and and growing my muscles. I don't know. This is the way God made me. This this God fault in the best way. All right. Thank y'all for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next video.